we're going to start with the normal dist function in Desmos. There's two ways that you can get there. You can click on the keypad in the lower left corner and you can get here either on your desktop or on your mobile phone app. I'm going to click on functions and I'm going to scroll down until I see distributions. So as I scroll down here, there's the distributions and I find normal dist. I can also get there and notice that it populates it there in my empty cell. If I X this out, I can also get there just by typing in normal dist parenthesis. Now it gives me the standard normal distribution with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. If you wanted to change this to a different mean, say that your mean was 20 and your standard deviation was 2.7, you can go ahead and type those values in as well. I am going to um, just get rid of those so I'm in the standard normal distribution. It's a little bit squashed here in my default viewing screen so I'm going to click on the zoom fit tool that looks like a little magnifying glass. So let me click on this and I've got a much better view. I'm going to click next on find cumulative probabilities. This is also finding areas under that normal curve. As I click on this, it gives me by default the entire area from a z-score of negative infinity to a z-score of positive infinity. Let's say instead that we wanted the left half and I'm going to go from a minimum of negative infinity and I want to go to a maximum of zero right there in the middle and it gives me that 0.5 area. If I wanted to find, um, let's say I wanted to find the area between two different z-scores, I can do that as well. I can go negative 1.2. I'm just gonna tab over to the maximum. Maybe I wanna go to 2.1. It shades and gives me that area of 0.867. I can even do it in a tail, either a right tail or a left tail. So let's say that we wanted to go, um, I don't know, 2.1 and I wanted to go to to infinity here. If you wanted to get infinity in there, you can just delete what you've got there and then it gives you the area of that tail. But we can also go backwards. We can give Desmos an area and it will give us back the z-score. I'm going to go ahead and grab another empty cell and I'm going to again type in normal dist parenthesis. If I hit parenthesis and then the period, I can add on here an inverse function. I'm going to get to the inverse function through my keypad. I'm going to click on functions, scroll back down to that distribution menu. My distributions are right here and I'm going to click on this inverse CDF. It's working on my normal dist, but it will work on any of the other distributions that Desmos offers. I'm going to click on inverse CDF and it puts it there right after my period. So I'm going to give it um, an area and if I give it an area, let's give it an area of 0 0.10. The area that I've given it is the area on the left hand side. So whatever goes inside of inverse CDF is always going to be an area from the left which is why it's giving me that z-score of negative 1.28. If I do an inverse norm for an area of 0.5, it gives me that zero back that I expected. I can also work with normally distributed data that is off of the standard normal curve. I'm going to type in normal dist again. So normal dist parenthesis, and let's go ahead and put in a mean salary of $95,380 with a standard deviation of $1,259. Notice that my normal curve did not show up here and that's because I need to click on zoom fit. So I'm going to click my magnifying glass. There's my normal curve and you can see that the mean is now at the mean that I gave it. I want to find the probability that a person selected at random has a salary between 95,000 and 98,000. So I'm going to click on find cumulative probability. It gives me my default probability, which would be one or 100% for everybody. But I want the probability that a person selected at random, their salary is between 95,000, one, two, three, 
And what did I say? 98,000, one, two, three. And it shades my area and also gives me that probability of about 60%. Take a look at this next video here to learn more about Desmos. I hope this was helpful. Thanks so much for watching.